I'm from like the fifth grade I remember writing I'm depressed and I really meant that like, like I just want to be happy and stay weird Hi everyone, I'm Anaya Mune. Thank you so much for clicking this video. Um, so today I'll basically be doing a little short get ready with me. I'm going to do a little makeup makeup look. Um, I'm not a makeup artist. So, um, you could leave your negative <laughs> comments like what she doing down below, but it would be more helpful if you leave tips down below. So yeah, I'm just going to do a no makeup makeup look and I'm going to be sharing my testimony with you. So I'm going to do some and then I'm going to tell you all some stories and then I'm going to do some and then I'll tell you some of the story. Subscribe to me at Anaya Monet on YouTube. You could watch me on your TV, on your laptop, on your phone, whatever, or you could Follow me on IG at the other twin underscore money. M O N E T. Money. Okay, so first I'm gonna put on some moisturizer lotion. Oh, and by the way, it's like 10 o'clock at night. And this is why I have on my bonnet. I had this on all day. But now wake up. Excuse my little arm. I like my nails. Let me show you. That's mm -hmm. my nails. Testimonies basically is like a story to tell you about not only like why I believe in God but why I'm still sitting here like why am I still alive um I know that sounds stupid to say but I had a lot of occasions where I could have just died could we still about this now? <laughs> okay so yeah um I wanted to share my testimony as the first video I just got a hairstyle to do anyway but the first video for like rest of my life sis cuz I can't find what I was gonna put on it I was gonna put something shiny on it to shine it or whatever but time is of the essence because I have to go on a call so yeah let me start with my testimony before I make this video long and this, I really don't make this video long so let me see from I was like younger than I am now cuz I'm still young 16 going on 17 years young um i'm gonna be a senior in high school like next week but when i was younger i've been i guess a lot of people could say i've stepped out of the box i feel like i was really shy i was still kind of am but i don't think i've ever really like been shy i think i've been yeah i could see much more in this mirror so sorry if i look in this way i think i've been much more so um just reserved just like really um selective in the people you talk to and stuff and not because not because you feel like you don't like them or anything like that it's just because you don't know who you, you like who would accept you so i guess i've only talked to people who i feel like accept me already so yeah i think that's been me most of the time big eyes <laughs> because like i said i wasn't very talkative and i'm still not um actually i am I'm a lot more than people think I am, but I don't talk a lot to people because I feel like I had a lot of my personality based on who I feel would accept it, and that's really dumb because who loves me would accept it, right? But my testimony has a lot to do with like my identity. My testimony has a lot to do with who I am, my identity. It has a lot to do with who people have perceived me as. And, um, who I feel like I needed to be a lot of the time. When it had nothing to do with that, you know, I would have been accepted a lot more if I was just myself from the beginning. It was just a lot of me trying to be who everybody wanted me to be. Me being, it's like I would be different versions of myself depending on who the person was. And that makes no sense because the world needs you, like the world needs original you. That makes no sense. My parents are also separated, which is a big part of my testimony because a lot of people feel like, my parents are bosses by the way, a lot of people feel like, oh, you already get experience to God, um, what are you complaining for? But 
there's nothing like seeing church people not act like what the Bible say. There's nothing like seeing people act uh, completely opposite. It's like the God God would be like, do not commit adultery. And you see it happen right in front of your face. Do not steal. Do not lie. You see it happen right in front of your face. So it's like you want me to be Christian, but you doing all this stuff. So I was in about that Christian life. enjoyed her. She has a natural head business and page called Tropical Girls. Y'all go follow her. That's my twin sister. Um, I don't know the rest of her social medias and stuff like that. But go follow her. Go follow her if you really like um, hair and stuff. Like, it was so serious for me because I knew I would go to church when I was, like, younger. I don't want to say false, but it's true because I didn't want to be there. I didn't. And that's just facts. I really didn't want to be there because I didn't believe in what everybody was preaching. Um, even though, like, my dad didn't live with us for, like, three or so years. I watched the whole thing happen right before my eyes. Um, the affair was with my godmother, someone I was really, really close to. You would like depend on, and then out of nowhere, it's like, oh, you can't even call in the house. So it was, it was different um, to feel all of that. Also, during my childhood, I feel like I was very, I, I can tell the truth. I feel like I was very much abused. Um, and I don't want to say it like that, but I feel like because my personality wasn't understood, I'm very quiet. Like I said, even I think I am very quiet, even though I don't talk, even though I like to talk a lot, I still am very quiet. Even when I talk, I'm still very quiet. You see my voice cutting out. And that's because I'm quiet. I'm a pretty quiet person. So I think I tried to speak a lot of the time. And even now, my mom didn't hear me or my sister wouldn't hear me. And a lot of the time. I just, I wasn't doing well mentally because me and my dad are very similar too. I think that's a big part of it as well. Maybe why I got like punished and beat and all of that so much. But we are very similar. And for him to not be around, that was awkward for me. So I didn't do it in school. I was, I was just rebelling. I, I, I was getting bullied in school as well. So I just wasn't doing well. Um, and the Christian thing wasn't helping me. I've always had dreams from when I was younger. So I always knew like God was real. Like there was no doubt in my mind that God wasn't real. Because I used to have these dreams and stuff telling me directly about like, you know, if you're a Christian and you know like about how people just have dreams and visions and God really speak to people, that used to happen to me. I used to just start singing in tongues when I was younger. And my mommy would say that to me. I'd be like, miss, you mean talking to me? Because whatever this God is. You know, like, I believed in him. Enough to get, like, when my dad did come back from where he was, I still believed in God. But after that time, it was just like, I ain't doing this no more. It was like, this God? I don't understand. Also... When my parent, when my dad came back home, my parents got back together. Um, it wasn't easy because, so it was a matter of just like, I don't want no more of this. Um, Cause even when my father did come back home, it was like still a lot of chaos. I feel like my mom was still in a lot of pain and she directed it on to everybody. So the house was really like still angry in a position of like, 
anger and all kind of stuff and even as I like move on into my teenage years and stuff my sister is the rebellious one she really is because I don't have the energy but my sister was the rebellious one and like I told them I just had a conversation with my parents a couple months ago just admitting to them that I felt very abandoned what do I do first I haven't worn makeup in so long so I kind of forgot how I do how I normally do it but but I told them yeah like I felt pretty abandoned for a number of reasons because for a number of reasons because like you know like a lot more pay a lot more attention I felt like was going on to my sister and during that time I had like really bad anxiety and everything like I tried to spend a lot of time with them and I tried to like um I tried to find more time to be around them but I think they were really focused on the fact that my sister was rebelling and it wasn't helping me because I was trying to find some kind of you know like class space or try to find myself or try to be free or whatever else I was feeling and it was helping me um, from like the fifth grade I remember writing I'm depressed and I really meant that but I would go to sleep like you know, like, feeling like, I can't do this no more. So, I went through a lot of that, just feeling like I was going crazy. There it is, I was looking for my concealer, y'all, that's what I was doing. I felt really alone, but a really, I didn't even brush my eyebrows. That's how you know it was a video, because this ain't how I actually do it. I felt alone for a pretty long time. Just feeling like nobody really listening to me. Feeling like people can't hear like when I talk and stuff. I felt alone for a pretty long time because I feel like I was always talking. People wasn't always listening. Always talking, always saying like, hey, um, I feel this way or I feel that way. And I didn't really know who I was, it's like I said. I was trying to be who everybody wanted me to be. My mom was very strict. Even when my, when my dad left, she was very, very strict. Good grades or nothing. Very sure. So, grades to me was important because it was a way of somehow like, you know, like that was the language my mommy was speaking. And I felt like I was somehow in connection with them. What else? Um, so yeah, I started to go through a lot of anxiety and depression. Um, I had this one event at school. I feel like I should do a different story time on that. Like, when I realized I had anxiety problem because everybody has bad everyone has anxiety but everyone doesn't have bad anxiety and everyone doesn't have like anxiety problems a lot of people can manage the anxiety but i only can manage mine to a certain extent and sometimes like during the month or year my anxiety gets bad but anyway um how i knew i had a problem with it from like the fifth grade i was saying i'm depressed i'm making friends with me making friends for me has always been like different you know like for a lot of people i feel like it's a lot easier because they're just a lot more friendly and stuff because people still didn't really see my identity i just used to you know like be whoever they thought i was or i really don't put this much on my face i just can't really see so but i wanted to do a video with like no make without no makeup so y'all can see how i really look because in almost every other video, I'll probably be wearing makeup. Because I struggle with anxiety for a pretty, pretty much a while, just trying to figure out like who I am. Um, like I said, I had a lot of visions and dreams and stuff like that. So I've always like it's like voices. When you have visions, or when you get messages from God per se, it's always been like voices. And even when I was feeling like, you know. Even when I was even suicidal, when I didn't want to live, when I really wanted to commit suicide, I really thought about it, but I didn't because, like I said, I knew God was real. I really knew God was real because God talked to me all the time. Give me dreams for people and be like, oh, call this person. I'll say hi to that person. I'm like, I ain't doing that because I don't like talking to people. But I knew God was real. I always, always, always knew God was real. But my anxiety got to like a point where it was like i'm not dealing with this no more you know and i was having really really bad anxiety so 
I got to a really dark place. I remember walking in school really like sad and depressed and lonely and just feeling like I can't do this anymore and just feeling like God take me now. But I didn't. Um I remember telling God like I really didn't want to live. I remember just wishing like I got run over by a truck. All kinds of stuff. Like I really did not want to be alive. I didn't see any purpose in life. Like I said, I was it was really dark for me at a point in time and I just didn't want to fight. A lot of my friends were changing around the time as well. And I stayed quiet because ain't nobody would be the one who always need help or who always need somebody to check on them and stuff. I stayed quiet and there was a lot of suicidal people in my grade during the time. So I stayed quiet, like really, really quiet. And no one would have known. really depressed really like not wanting to live um i was in school one day and the whole week i think i had a swim meet that weekend and the whole week i was feeling like i was going crazy like my heart was like i think this was like the first this is the first panic attack i had that i could really remember that's good that's good to me i got oh you way too much way too much That's what I really remember, like, going in the doctor's office in the middle of school. And I missed, like, a week of school because I had really bad anxiety. My hands were shaking. I felt like I was going crazy, all of that kind of stuff. I felt like I was losing my mind. And I really, truly was. I was ready to give up on life. My doctor prescribed me on Xanax. Anybody know about Xanax? Don't even take it. Like... If you get prescribed, damn I still take it because I was a zombie for however long I was taking it, I was a zombie. I couldn't say proper sentences. My parents kept asking me like what was up and why I think it is that I had the anxiety attack or why I was having really bad anxiety. But I don't know how I was feeling because I was a zombie. <laughs> So, I don't know how I was feeling, it's just, that's how I was feeling. Anyway, anyway, let me tell you what happened, right? I don't remember the exact timeline or whatever, but for a while, I felt really, really bad. And I remember getting to a point where I was like, God, I can't do this no more. Hey, if you don't send somebody to just, like, take me out or something, I'm going to lose my mind. I remember saying that to God. God never leave me alone. I was in the world, so I can't help nobody. If I'm not the um, so basically I was in the shower one night. I'm like, God, I can't do this anymore. Um, I'm ready to give up, and I just don't want to be alive anymore. Hey. Oh yeah, it's time to mix it up. Again.